Can you think back to a time where you were like reading scripture and you were reading maybe the gospels and you were like, man, this guy Jesus, maybe he doesn't have it all right. Uh, that sounds like a foreign concept to us as Christians nowadays, uh, but what if I told you that one of the most influential authors of our generation and the generation before us uh, maybe thought that way? I think sometimes we can uh, maybe accidentally stumble on some things, and uh, what I want to talk today about is C.S. Lewis. This guy was great. He wrote a lot of really good stuff, uh, but he said one thing that just really irked me, uh, and then I started doing some research on it and started seeing like, oh, maybe there's something to this. So today, talk about the one thing C.S. Lewis said that drove me nuts and how it brought me to crazy revelation in a lot of other areas. But first, let's get some coffee because you know I can't run without it. I can believe in God, all right, but what I can't swallow is this idea of him listening to several hundred million human beings who are all addressing him at the same moment. And I find quite a lot of people feel that difficulty. Alright, so for a lot of you, you probably know who C.S. Lewis is, but for those of you who don't, he was a famous author, he was a preacher, he was kind of a theologian, he was kind of a jack of all trades. I think he was a historian at some point, but what he's probably most known for, which those of you who may not recognize the name, is the Chronicles of Narnia series, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and those kind of things. There were some popular movies made, uh, I don't know, five years ago or so uh, about that series, and there's also another uh, version that they made, I don't know, maybe in the early 90s, and it's really cheesy, but it's what I grew up on. We must move from this place at once. It will soon be needed for other things. So he's done a lot, a lot of good things. The one thing I don't want to happen in this video is anyone to think that I think he is a bad guy. Not what this video is about at all. What it is about is one particular thing that he said, that he mentioned, that I kind of want to put under a microscope for a minute and say, whoa, I was shocked when I saw that he said this. If I'm being honest, I would be shocked by anyone who claims to be a Christian who would say something like this. So here's the quote. The apocalyptic beliefs of the first Christians have been proved to be false. It is clear from the New Testament that they all expected the second coming in their own lifetime. And worse still, they had a reason, and one which you will find very embarrassing. Their master had told them so. He shared and indeed created their delusion. He said in many words, this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. And he was wrong. He clearly knew no more about the end of the world than anyone else. It is certainly the most embarrassing verse in the Bible. The one exhibition of error and the one confession of ignorance grow side by side. The facts then are these, that Jesus professed himself, in some sense, ignorant, and within a moment showed that he really was so. So what C.S. Lewis is trying to say there is that Jesus told the disciples the end of the world was coming, that the end of the age was coming, and that it was all going to happen before their generation died out. This is a topic that is shrouded in a lot of mystery, and I do not necessarily blame for C.S. Lewis not having an answer to this mystery. However, when we study, uh, when we look at Jesus' life and his words, the one thing that I can't bring myself to do is to say that Jesus was wrong. 
there isn't one other instance, in fact, I think C.S. Lewis uh, said this, there's not even another instance where Jesus was wrong, but in this particular instance, he was wrong. Man, I can't bring myself to think that Jesus was wrong. Now, for those of you who may not know too much about eschatology, Matthew 24 is a big section of scripture where Jesus talks about the end of the age. This paired up with the book of Revelation is where a lot of people pull their eschatology or end time belief system from. So they look at what uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24 and they say, okay, clearly Jesus is talking about the apocalypse, the end of the world. And then it doesn't come to pass in the next 40 years or so, which would have been a generation. And C.S. Lewis looks at that and says, see, Jesus was wrong. Here's an idea I wanna to present to everyone here. What if Jesus wasn't wrong? <laughs> now, before you go nuts, what I'm not saying is that the world ended within a generation of Jesus' death. What I am trying to put on the table is that maybe, just maybe, C.S. Lewis and a lot of our modern eschatology has missed what Jesus was talking about. What's funny is that when I mention these things to most Christians, uh, they have no clue what I'm talking about. It's kind of like deer in the headlights. There's something significant that happened and I don't wanna to get too much into eschatology here. Maybe we can attack that in a later video. What I do want to do is try to show you what I believe Jesus was talking about and where I think C.S. Lewis missed it. For those of you who do not know, in 70 AD, the Roman Empire basically surrounded the city of Jerusalem and completely leveled it. I'm talking destroyed it. If you've read some of the historical accounts about what happened, this should be a movie. I mean, this is, I think, on par with maybe Braveheart or something like that. It was bloody, it was nasty, it was a horrible situation. That happened, by the way, about 40 years after Jesus said, and all of this will come to pass at the end of this generation. What I believe Jesus was doing was not warning us about the end of the world. In fact, I think if you go back and break down the actual Hebrew, he was saying the end of the age, something that was coming to an end. Obviously, it wasn't the end of the world. So. In 70 AD, when the temple was destroyed, it wasn't just people who died, it wasn't just monuments and, and a city that kind of got leveled to the ground. Something significant happened. The temple where the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious people and the Orthodox Jews who were at the time outside of the Christians who were doing their mission, that was all destroyed. The bloodline of the Pharisees was destroyed. The sacrificial system and the hub that kept it all together was destroyed. What I want to present to you today is that I believe when Jesus said, and all of this will come to pass by the end of the age, I believe Jesus was talking about the end of the age of the law. This freaks a lot of people out because they're like, whoa, 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 Jesus said he didn't come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. You are 1 million percent right. Jesus subjected himself to a law that he didn't even really like because he had to fulfill it. But through what he did on the cross, his death, his resurrection, now it opened the door for the law to be done away with. Now I know there's some of you Christians right now who are like, dude, no, and I get it. For a long time I was taught that no, maybe we don't need to observe the law, but there's still some good stuff in it. And if you guys saw my video, The Mountain of Relationship, which I'll pop up right here, you'll know that maybe the law isn't what we always thought it was. I believe if you go back and read what Jesus was saying in Matthew 24, it lines up almost perfectly with what happened in 70 AD. So the reason we're talking about C.S. Lewis today is not so much a critique on him or his life, but I do believe it was something important that he missed in that quote. He thinks that Jesus was wrong, that Jesus missed it because the end of the world didn't happen within a generation. However, I would argue that C.S. Lewis did not understand that Jesus wasn't talking about the apocalypse, the end of the world. He was talking about the end of the age of the law. So now here's the big question. What does that mean? If for a long time we've been under the impression that Matthew 24, large parts of Revelation, all of that was talking about the apocalypse, the end of the world, and we've based a lot of our faith and religion and Christianity off of that. If that's now not true in the case of Matthew 24, 
what else have we potentially missed? I don't wanna spend a whole video here talking about our eschatology, but I do wanna point out one thing, that maybe what we think the end is isn't really what it is. I would challenge you as I'm challenging myself in this season, let's study it, let's go deeper. Put some comments below what you think Jesus was talking about. If it lines up with what you believe 70 AD was all about, study that by the way. Wherever you like to get your information, go and research the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and tell me for you if it doesn't line up with what Jesus was saying in Matthew 24 because I believe if it doesn't line up, then we have to admit, like C.S. Lewis said, if it doesn't line up, then Jesus was wrong. I'm not ready to say that Jesus was wrong about anything yet. I don't know about you guys. I know I'm opening a huge can of worms right now, but I think it's important for us to kind of peel back our faith, our Christianity. Uh, I have friends who say deconstruct it, and let's see if maybe we've missed things. Maybe our father's generation, our grandfather's generation, just believe stuff because we were told to believe it, but maybe we didn't have a good understanding of what Jesus and a lot of these scriptures are trying to say. Here's my challenge. Let's get a conversation going in the comments, on Facebook, wherever you're at, wherever you're seeing this. Post your ideas, uh, post your research. Let's see where we go when we look at this. Please feel free to prove me wrong, this idea wrong. Let's have fun with this and maybe, just maybe, together we can start uncovering more things that maybe we have missed. Thank all of you for watching the channel, for keeping up with what's going on. I am attempting to just keep pushing ideas forward, kind of deconstruct them and see where we land. This is gonna stretch us. This isn't always gonna feel comfortable. It's gonna cause us to ask questions that maybe we never even thought to ask before, but that's where I've been at in this season of my life, and it's been super, super fruitful. So I'm just trying to put this out there for other people and see where they land, and hopefully we can do this together and come up with something awesome. You guys are great. Thanks for watching and we'll have more content coming up soon.